G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are talking bus part two. We're talking bus for points league. These players, and there are a lot of them, are going way too high in fantasy basketball drafts. Let's go! Jordan, open! Chicago with the lead! talking about practice. LeBron James with no record for human life. And he's going to go. Back out to Allen. History quarter. Bang! Hurry for three. Wow! Unbelievable. Making it rain in New York. We the North are now we the champions. Not the destination. It's the journey. Mamba out. G'day and Welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter or X at Ball Boys Fantasy. You can also check out all of my uh, rankings, projections, and fantasy ideas over at ballboysmba.com. Today, we are going to go through the bus for points leagues. We've already done our bus for category leagues. We've also done our sleepers for both category and points leagues. So if you haven't already, Go and check those videos out. They've been coming out the last couple of days. We're getting right into the thick of the countdown to the NBA season. Not too far away, just over a month till tip-off. And uh, it's getting exciting. Lots of fantasy basketball content coming your way, guys. So make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. And uh, while you're there, just give this video a big old thumbs up, guys. Really appreciate the the support so far in the season. We've got lots of cool things coming, but uh, let's not waste too much time, guys. We're going to get stuck into this video straight away because there are a lot of bus candidates for points leagues. Now, reminder, we're calling these bus um, as a catchy kind of thumbnail and uh, clickbaity title, but we're also just basically talking about guys who are overvalued based on Yahoo's recent rankings update. Now, reminder, for points leagues, this is there, there are a lot of players on this one because Yahoo tries to have a one-size-fits-all rankings on their website. And if your league monitors or drafts closely to this type of ranking list at all, even remotely close to, there are a lot of pitfalls and a lot of value to be getting in drafts here. So especially for the points league side of things, we have got many, many, many guys that are being overvalued because of their value in category leagues that don't quite translate over to points leagues. So very important to not be caught up on those rankings if you are drafting. Um, If you want exactly my rankings and projections based on Yahoo's default scoring method, you can go and check out my top 150 over at ballboysmba.com. But let's get stuck into it. First player here is Steph Curry, who is ranked at number seven on Yahoo's rankings there. Now, Steph Curry might not necessarily be what you would consider a bust, but I think in a points league setting, he is a little bit overvalued. Um, there, There could be an argument to this not being the case, but the fact that they've traded in Chris Paul, I think hurts his overall assist numbers. Now, you've replaced... Well, you've brought in Chris Paul to replace uh, Jordan Poole. So there might be some more scoring and usage opportunity to come into uh, Steph Curry. But Andrew Wiggins did miss a lot of time last season. And does the increasing um, need for his offense offset the uh, the drop in assists that I expect with Chris Paul coming into? Plus the fact that Chris Paul is over 35 years old. Um, the last few seasons, he hasn't been able to crack 65 games because obviously he's an older player, they're trying to rest him a little bit for the playoffs, does make me a little bit concerned. So, And a few other guys just take a step forward in a points league setting. So in a, in a category league, you're getting really, really good value with his elite top of the NBA three-pointers made. You don't care about that in points leagues. You don't care about his elite free throw percentage. He will be a guy that, like he was 11th last year in category, sorry, in points leagues, um, You know, averaging 46.8 fantasy points per game. But I just think that that is probably the higher end of where we expect him to go. Being a bit older, you take a little bit of a discount. So I don't think he's necessarily a guy that I would want to be targeting in the first round. He's definitely more of a second round player to me in a a standard Yahoo points format. So at rank seven, that's definitely inflated by his category value. I would be considering Steph Curry a second rounder for standard points leagues. And a very similar story for this next guy who... On Yahoo, Damian Lillard is ranked number 10. Now, my range for Lillard is more of a 20 to 25. Now, 
He is a player, again, very similar to um, a Steph Curry where his threes don't provide any weight or value. His elite free throw percentage doesn't provide much value either. He was a top 10 points league player last season. Again, number nine, averaging 49.1 points per game, fantasy points per game, that is. And if he stays on the Portland Trailblazers, I would expect that to be somewhat similar. However, you do have the risk of him being traded. The reports are that he's going to be reporting back to um, Portland at the moment to begin the season. So you might see him return this type of value to begin the season. However, I just think that if he goes anywhere else, because right now in Portland, he's the show, he's the guy, and he's obviously wanting to get traded somewhere where he can compete. So any trade destination like that, he's going to share it with another superstar, which he hasn't done for a long time. Um, So I think whenever you see that usage drop down, the assist rate drop down, it might just bring him down into that second round. The uncertainty just has me a little bit more nervous. So, And again, he's an older player at 33 years old, so slightly younger than Steph by a couple of years. But again, you've got that uncertainty of where he'll be playing the majority of this season. So again, probably more of a second round player for me. His upside to me at number nine ranked player the season before. He's been 8th, 13th, and 9th the last three seasons. 29th in that year where he was pretty pretty banged up and injured. I'm not really going to count that. So he is definitely a guy that's around that 10 range mark. So the Yahoo rank is, is okay, but that's not taking into account any downside, which I think you do have to do with a Damian Lillard, especially um, yeah, in a points league where in a category league, you punt certain categories and he can be a top five asset for you in head-to-head leagues. So there's a little bit of upside there in that type of a, a build and settings. But in a points league, it's, it's just the raw numbers. And, and this basically is his ceiling and you've got a fair way to drop off. So I wouldn't be wanting to draft him in the first round. Again, more of a second rounder to me. Both of those first two, look, they're probably not huge busts. They're not going to ruin your draft. But I do think that they are going basically up their ceiling. And um, I think you could probably do better and get a younger player um, in at that spot. All right, so this is where we start to get into some real busts, in my opinion. Some players that are really overvalued because of their category league rankings. Um, Fred Van Vliet is the next guy here. He is someone that surprisingly performs better in a category league despite his really poor field goal percentage. But it comes on the back of him being valued in category leagues because of his steals and threes. Um, He's also a decent player shot blocking point guard funnily enough being um, a smaller guy six foot tall but he was last season the 34th ranked player in points leagues he goes over to Houston where he's escaping the Nick Nurse extreme minutes so he did that in nearly 37 minutes a night I think that's going to scale back two or three minutes uh, per game there's also a decent amount of talent on the Houston Rockets so he's not going to walk into this team and suddenly be a 25 points per game Uh, guy. He averaged 39.9 fantasy points per game last season. So I think I'd expect that to scale back just a tiny bit on the Houston Rockets because of those minutes just dropping a little bit. So I'm more keen on drafting him outside the top 40 versus in the second round where he is ranked over on Yahoo. Again, more on the back of his um, category league ranking and value there. I think there's also a few other younger guys that are going to take a step forward, which bump him down compared to his 34th ranked season last year. He's basically never really cracked the top 30 in fantasy points leagues. He's always between 30 and 43 his last four seasons. I'm going to take more of the back um, end of that. So to me, he is definitely overvalued when it comes to the Yahoo ranking on points leagues. Um, Now, don't fall into the trap of him being ranked too high on Yahoo, sitting at the top of your board. I think I think that would be a mistake because I just don't see too much upside. He's you know, 29, turning 30 this season, so he's not really getting any better anymore. He's kind of stagnated the last couple of seasons and he kind of is what he is at this point. And with that minutes downside, plus the fact that he was outside the top 30 last year, there's no reason to draft him. Um, before 35 or 40 this season. So my range here optimally where I'd like to get him would be 45 to 55. I don't know if he's dropping that far in most drafts just because of the name and he's in a new location and there's a bit of hype around that. Um, But that's ideally where I'd like to be getting him. Another player who might be a bit overhyped this season, especially for points leagues, is Mikhail Bridges. Now, a lot of you might think that, well, hold on, when he went to Brooklyn, he started scoring a whole lot of points 
and um, that's going to be better for his points league value. And I would agree with you, it's definitely a better situation, especially for his points league value. A guy that was traditionally really valued in his um, category leagues because of his even um, contribution across the board. Good percentages, steals, blocks, that's all well and good. So he's definitely improved this year in the situation he's in, but not to Yahoo's rank of 20, in my opinion. So he's definitely a guy more in the 35 to 45 range. In the last two months of last season, he did put up 38.4 fantasy points per game as opposed to his season average of 34. So I think he's going to be more around that 38, 39 points per game, fantasy points per game this season, but again, that doesn't get him this high. He, he's a poor rebounder. He's a poor assist guy. The defensive stats did fall off when he's focused more offensively. Um, so yes, he's going to score maybe, you know, your 25 to 26 points per game on the court, but he doesn't really have those other stats to really take him over the top and give us the big, big fantasy points per game uh, numbers. He's consistent. He doesn't miss games. So maybe you bump him up a little bit because of that. So I can see you maybe reaching in like, you know, top 30, potentially 35 to 45 is where I'd really like to get him. But at Yahoo rank 20, that's again, influenced by his good efficiency in a category ranking setting and the, you know, the free throw attempt rate, which is important over there. But for us, we don't care. We just want fantasy points. And uh, I don't think he's going to provide second round value despite him scoring more this season. Another guy, again, maybe a bit of a bump because of the early, you know, loss of Ja Morant suspended for those 25 games, but it's not enough for me to get excited for Desmond Bain to be, again, a second round player ranked 22 on Yahoo. I think this is even too high for his category league where he's clearly going to be more useful because of his three-point volume. Last season, he was the 52nd ranked player in Yahoo Points Leagues. Look, I think he's a little bit better than that. So my range would be 40 to 50, taking into account the fact that Jar won't be there. He's, again, another year of experience. He's 25 years old. So really entering his prime at the moment. He's a good player. I think he he's solid. But again, 22, you're just not going to get that return from a Desmond Bain, even, I don't think, when um, Jar Morant is... In, oh, not in the side. He might just get there, but that's only for the first third of the season. Um, You've got, you got to think of your fantasy playoffs and all those kind of things. And when Jar is back, you've also got Marcus Smart coming in and might steal some of his assists as well. So I just think that, yeah, you're really not getting the return that you want here from a Desmond Bain, despite a player who played, uh, how many games? Did he, oh, actually only played 58 games last season. Typically, he played 76 and 68 the two seasons prior. So you think of him as a durable player, but he did have some injuries last year. But again, just suffers because of his category league ranking, which again, I think is a bit too high. Um, I think people are overvaluing the you know part of the season where he's going to be playing without Ja Morant um, compared to the rest of the season. Well, he's probably not going to provide or return anywhere close to this value. I think you're, you're giving yourself a couple of rounds um, of downside when you're drafting him in the late second, early third round. Before we move on to the next few guys, just a reminder, guys, ballboysmba.com is available and open for your business and for you guys to go and check out my season guides. Uh, we've got top 150 points and category rankings for um, all the, the thoughts on all of the players in there, um, where I would rank these guys considering injuries, considering my projections. You can also go and subscribe and become a platinum membership and get access to my actual projections for 250 players in the NBA where I think they're actually going to score their fantasy points per game prediction. Um, but also if you're playing category leagues as well, their nine cat and minus one rankings um, for standard leagues over there as well. So if you're keen to get an edge to dominate your fantasy basketball draft, win yourself a money across a couple of leagues, go and check that one out. And um, I'll also be dropping some fantasy basketball articles. We're going to be doing some exclusive uh, Q&As throughout the season. So if you want to ask me as many questions as you want, once a week, we're going to be doing an in detail um, a question answering session for just the Platinum members. And then also, if you are keen for some Dynasty content, that will be running all season long for Platinum members, right up even till the next year's NBA draft. You'll get my thoughts. Um, the first, you'll be the first ones to know my thoughts on all of the NBA rookies coming into next season. So 
make sure you go and check that one out if you are a keen dynasty manager. All right, let's move on to the next player. The next bust here is Miles Turner, who again, uh, the common theme is a lot of these guys, they're getting the category league bump. Now in a points league, the blocks are fine, but they're not season defining. Last year, he was the 51st ranked player when it came to points league, putting up 18, 7.5, 2.3 blocks. I think you're basically going to get the exact same um, as you would this season. You might even have a bit of downside with Obi Toppin and Jarris Walker joining this team. Bruce Brown is joining this team. Another step forward from um, players like Matherin, Tyrese Halliburton might take more of the usage. So I think around that 50 to 60 range is where I'd rather get him rather than the 33 ranking that Yahoo has given him. Because in a category leagues, those blocks are very valuable. In a points league, not so much. Um, so 51st last season. I think that's probably his ceiling again this year with a little bit of downside. So if you can get him from 50 to 60, I think that's fine. There's no real threats to him, I don't think. But again, he just isn't returning that value when it comes to points leagues. So pretty cut and dry in that one there as well. Nikola Vucevic, my, uh, I think he's becoming my, my guy in an anti sense this season. I just think that Yahoo and drafters have got this guy all wrong. He actually profiles better to me this season in a points league setting. I'm actually lower on him in a category league setting, in particularly for head-to-head leagues because he doesn't do anything extremely well outside of rebound. Last year, he was the 40th ranked player when it came to points leagues. Reminder, though, he had um, close to a career high in field goal percentage last year at 52%. The previous three seasons before that, he was closer to 47%. He also is every year for the past three years seeing a slowly declining usage rate. So his points, uh, sorry, his field goal attempts are going down every season. And I expect that trend to continue at least a little bit. So to me, 40 is his absolute ceiling. In um, a points leagues, I'd want to wait to outside the top 50 because I expect a small step back for him. And there are a few younger players that take a little bit of a jump. So at 36, it's not as bad in a points league setting because he is consistent in terms of his rebounds and he gets some decent assists. He doesn't rely on defensive stats, which can be a little bit more volatile. So I probably prefer him more than like a Miles Turner, for example. There's no real threat to his minutes or anything like that. Not too much changing in Chicago either. But I just think that that field goal percentage is going to come back. I wouldn't expect him to repeat last season's numbers. Um, So I think that at rank 36, you're probably losing at least a round's value there. But probably not as much of a bust in a points league as in a head-to-head category league, in my opinion. But still 36, too high, overvalued. Next guy here, really big bust, I think, in this in this position. OG Ananobi, he is ranked 46 on Yahoo. I believe he led the league, I want to say, in steals last season, which again, for a category league, probably has him overvalued there as well. But Yahoo has him ranked at 46. Last season, he was the 78th ranked player when it came to um, uh, points leagues. So... I've got him at 60 to 70. Uh, Looking at the screen right now, you probably could even bump him down a bit further. He's just not as valuable in a Yahoo Standard Points League. He he might get a bit of a bump because of the loss of Fred Van Vliet. Maybe a small tick up in usage and assist rate. But it's not enough to get him anywhere close. His highest season um, has been uh, 71st when it comes to Points League ranking. That was, again, only in 48 games. So he's... Hasn't played more than 70 games, I don't think, in his last four seasons. Two seasons where he was under 50 games. So there's just really no reason to be drafting him anywhere close to the top 50. Probably looking closer to that 70 range, if not beyond, because then you by then you're wanting guys who can beat that average. And I just don't think OG is going to do that. So in a points league, this guy is a huge bust. Don't fall into the trap of his rankings because that is highly influenced by his nine cat ranking because of the steals. And even then, when you average 1.9 steals, that is very hard to sustain. So I would expect that to fall back down. So he's just overall overrated in fantasy basketball um, rankings and points projections. I just clear, clear bust when it comes to fantasy point leagues. So please do not fall into the trap of drafting OG anywhere inside the top 60, in my opinion. Um, That will lead to some pain, I believe. The next guy here, Walker Kessler. Again, 
Big, big hype around this guy in category leagues. So his Yahoo ranking is at 48. He's a guy who started at the back end of last season. So when he did move into the starting lineup, if I just pull up his averages here. So as a starter, he ranked as... What did he rank as? So in the last three months, he was the 57th ranked player in a fantasy points league setting. So again, probably someone that is overvalued because of his ranking in a category league. Those blocks are more valuable. I think he could have a chance of being the number one shot blocker in the NBA this season. But again, that is extremely volatile. So in a points league, it's all points at the end of the day. But... You also don't want to rely on someone who can get maybe six blocks one game, one block the next game, and his output because of that is extremely up and down. That's not necessarily something I want to rely on when it comes to my fantasy points. So even if I project players to maybe equal the same amount of fantasy points, like the um, Nikola Vucevic example um, from before, he's going to get there because of his good points, rebounds, and assists versus... Um, Kessler's going to get there with big rebounds, yes, but also extremely high blocks. Um, he's not going to score as much, definitely not going to get as much assists and steals. So I, I think that that's more consistent and reliable than the second example. Even at the end of the year, at the end of the season, their average is similar. I would just much rather prefer that guy that's doing it a bit more week in, week out, and I can rely on that when it comes to fantasy playoffs. A little bit of risk-reward in that uh, uh, range there, but again... You've got John Collins coming over to this team. Um, you've drafted another power forward uh, player, Taylor Hendricks, which I do quite like. Um, I just don't think he's going to get the usage that you would want in a points league setting. He is a younger player, but 22 years old, not the youngest rookie. I don't necessarily see much room for him to improve offensively. It's really just going to come down to those block and rebound numbers. So, um, yeah, I just think that at 48, it's over overvalued. I wouldn't be wanting to draft him until outside the top 60, in my opinion, and then probably even later than that because of the fact that you are relying on those blocks to give you those fantasy points, which I wouldn't really want to do. All right, let's move on to the next guy, another big guy. So a lot of these big guys, again, you'll see in these points leagues are overvalued because of their field goal percentage and blocks that they provide in category leagues. It just doesn't offer the same reward in points leagues. And I'm, I'm a big um, believer in this season of Evan Mobley taking a bit more of a role when it comes to playing center minutes. George Niang's addition can play him at power forward, provide more spacing. So Mobley moving to center. Allen, I think I can see a slight dip in his minutes. But even then, last season, he was the 67th ranked player for points leagues. Um, so his ranking on Yahoo at 54. You're already around back from that. And I think I see nothing really but downside. So to me... He's a guy definitely outside top 75, outside top 80. There's no real upside from a player like Allen to beat his um, 33 fantasy points per game last season. I think that that probably goes down, maybe even slightly below 30 this season. So I just think that, yeah, there's not too much ups upside here. He's solid. He probably doesn't rely on the blocks quite as much as some of those other big guys, but again... He's not going to see a usage increase. He's not going to see a rebound increase. The assists aren't really there either. So he just, uh, again, doesn't offer too much when it comes to points league. And at 54, it's it's way too high, in my opinion, way too high. Another guy here, Jalen Williams, category league superstar down the stretch of last season. Again, doesn't get the bump when it comes to points leagues because we don't care about efficiency. We don't care about steals as much. Um, so last season, he was the 104th ranked player, averaging 28.3 fantasy points. In the last two months, he did shoot up to the 56th ranked player. Now, that could return the value here where Yahoo has got him at 59. That is all well and good, but... He did that on really, really high efficiency. He did it on elite steal numbers at 1.7. So you just scale that back a little bit. And I think it just brings him down maybe a point or two per game. Um, and I think it's just tough for me to see him maintain what he did last season with the addition of Chet Holmgren, who might take some rebound numbers away from him. Another step forward for Josh Giddy, who's younger than uh, Jalen Williams. Um 
Shea is going to be dominating the ball a lot of the time. So he'll be decent. I don't think he's that far away from this ranking, and he definitely has the upside to maybe even match it. But I definitely don't see him surpassing it. And so when you're drafting someone, I want a chance for them to beat their rankings for you to get value, where I really don't see that happening for Jalen Williams. So I think he's more of a 75-plus guy in terms of getting him on, on your team. So the range I've got here is 80 to 90 because then I see some value in, in drafting him and has the potential to beat that. But I don't think that, um, you know, a lot of the times because of what we saw at the end of last season, I think people will go a little bit crazy for him. And I just don't see that necessarily being something that's reliable to trust in or something that he has any chance to do better than, which is basically where he is ranked at 59. Um, he was putting out that value for those two months. I just think that that's basically his ceiling uh, moving forward. Similar kind of story in a roundabout way in Derek White, who's the next bust here. Ranked at 63, he is someone who's getting a big bump because of the loss of Marcus Smart. Now, I think that there's a a misconception that he's now going to become a starter. He actually started all of last year, basically. He started for 70 out of the 82 games he played. Um, he did play all 82 games, so maybe that's also bumping him up a little bit. But as a starter, he averaged 27 fantasy points per game. So that would rank him probably close to that 100 mark. I think you might see a bump in his assists. But again, you're replacing Marcus Smart with Kristaps Porzingis. So I think you're going to see more usage for Kristaps Porzingis than Marcus Smart did. So his scoring might take a little bit of a dip. Um, And again, he's just not that exciting in terms of upside. He's not a big scorer. So I think that you're really, really hoping that he just turns it to another level. And again, at age 29, I think he is what he is. Um, Maybe a small step forward from last year's numbers where he was the 126th ranked player at Yahoo points at 26 points per game. So maybe closer to that 30 mark, which to me is, again, around that 100 rank um, for Derek White. So you're losing about 40 spots of value, in my opinion. Again, overhyped, I think, even in category leagues. And in that format, he's better um, than in a, in a points league format as well. Because, um, look, he, he played 28 minutes a night as a starter for 90% of the games um, last season. I think the minutes maybe come up a little bit. Assists come up a little bit. Shot attempts maybe drop back a touch. Marginal improvement, nowhere near this level uh, where Yahoo has him at 63. Next one here, Chris Paul, another very um, low usage, low scoring player. And I am very worried about how he fits. There is some talk recently that he will be starting in Golden State, which I don't really know how that's going to work. I just think that, again, last season he ranked 48th. They have dropped him down to 64th, so there is a chance that he reaches this one. I don't necessarily hate this one as much as the others, but I think that there's a big drop in his assists coming. I think the minutes dropped down from 32 last season to probably the high 20s. How does he work with Draymond Green in that same starting lineup? He typically is a player that plays a slower, more methodical pace. He likes to control the court as much as possible, whereas Golden State likes to get the ball up and down move the ball on, um, and I just don't know how those two worlds are going to collide. He's 38 years old, so he's slowly getting worse and worse and worse every season, and I just don't love getting him at the, you know, 65 range, where theoretically he could reach, and, you know, he beat that last season. I just don't really love Chris Paul this season. I think at 38 years old on a new team where he is, you know, He's probably the best playmaker on that team, but he's not the only playmaker. Like, you've got Steph Curry, you've got Draymond Green on that team as well. So, I don't know. I just don't love it. I don't think he's a good fit in that team. Of all the players that we've listed today, maybe this is the the most nitpicky, but I would prefer to get him outside the top 80 um, range so that he at least has a chance to beat that um, Yahoo rank and ADP. But at 64, I think, again, you're probably drafting him at his ceiling. Uh, for points leagues especially. The next one here, again, another one that I'm not super upset about in Cam Johnson. I think he's a a good player. He is older than you might expect. 
uh, because he was drafted as an older player. He's 27, nearly 28 years old. Last season, he was the 118th ranked player, but when he moved over to Brooklyn, he increased his points per game up to um, 29 and a half, which ranked him at 104th for the last two months of the season. He's ranked at 66, though, which is, again, just taking the expected bump too far. In a category of leagues, you're getting the benefit of his elite three-point shooting and his good efficiency. I can definitely see him improving again this season as a, uh, a guy who scores nearly 18, 19 points per game, gets uh, some rebounds and some sneaky assists and steals. But, again, it's just too far. You, you, you're paying too much for a player like this. I don't think he really gets close to this. He's probably more of an 85 to 95 guy, in my opinion. Um, solid. I think he plays a decent amount of games. He had some injuries last year, but usually is good for 65 games. Um, doesn't play a very injury-prone style. Um, so, and, and I think he's a good player, and I think he, he probably is the second highest usage player on the Brooklyn Nets behind him, Mikel Bridges. But again, uh, yeah, 66 is just too, too high for me for a points league player. This guy here is a huge bust because in a points league, I don't even know if it's worth drafting a player like Mitchell Robinson. His Yahoo rank is 80. Again, like those big guys we talked about before, the blocks and field goal percentage, we don't really care about. He is an extremely low usage player. Um, he's got a capable backup in Isaiah Hartenstein. And we've seen and we know what Tibbs does. He doesn't let his centers really do anything. They just pick and roll, rebound and block shots. And last season, he was the 109th ranked player in a points league. And again, we talked about players who rely on their blocks. Well, um, rebounds was his highest uh, fantasy points per game um, cat, uh, category. Blocks was his second highest. And I just don't want the blocks to be the second highest reason that you're scoring fantasy points per game because it, it just, again, it fluctuates day in, day out, week in, week out. So um, I just don't think that you really would want to rely on him. Doesn't really have any upside to beat this, in my opinion. So when you were already basically 110, and that's your ceiling, and I'm not really interested in drafting you at all. Um, maybe you take a crack outside the top 120 because you want that volatility on any given week. He can give you, um, I don't know, 11 blocks, and that catapults his fantasy points per game right up there. Sure, fine, go for it. I think that's fine. But I think outside the top 120, I'm not interested. Um, and at 80, you're losing probably 40 uh, spots of value at that point, And you're not getting much there as well. And last guy on this list, very similar story. My guy who I love, Robert Williams. You're just not getting the value. Again, blocks dependent. He probably does a little bit more then uh, a player like uh, Mitchell Robinson and his minutes has a little bit more of an upside compared to last year. He gets a few more assists as well than a Mitchell Robinson, not quite as one-dimensional. He was actually the 132nd ranked player last season, but again, that was in 23 and a half minutes. You know, Al Horford's another year older. They do bring in Chris Dupsa-Bozingas, so that's always a bit funky. He's probably not a guy I'd want to get until my last starting spot, probably a guy on my bench in 12-team leagues. Um, so I prefer to get him, yeah, between 115 and 125. So ideally as your first bench player. But at 84, where Yahoo has him ranked, again, that's category leagues, man. That's the bump for category leagues. His blocks are way more valuable there. His field goal percentage is way more valuable there. So he is he's just someone that doesn't have the ceiling. He doesn't have the ceiling. He's never going to go out and score 20 points uh, per game. He's never going to go out there and, and give you, you know, four or five assists. He, he just is what he is. Um, there's a little bit of minutes upside. Um, I think he has a chance to maybe demonstrate a little bit more scoring. You know, a couple of years ago, he was the 62nd ranked player when it came to fantasy points leagues. That was in 29.6 minutes per game. So that's the kind of upside that we kind of have with Robert Williams that I don't think we have with Mitchell Robinson, which is why I'd probably take him ahead of a player like Mitch Rob. But still, you know, 132 last season, 62 the year before. The year before that, he was 120th. So it's very up and down, very hard to rely on, and um, just not someone who I'm really keen on drafting as one of my starting uh, players for my fantasy roster. So that will do it there, guys. Lots of busts there uh, later in the preseason. I will condense that down into the 10 biggest busts for the season. But so far, 
as of right now for the Yahoo rankings until that changes, maybe close to the season. Those are all the players that I think are being overvalued and overhyped, especially a lot of that is due to the fact that the category release settings boost these guys up. So remember, if you're doing a fantasy points league draft and you're looking at those, those rankings over on Yahoo, they are not going to be um, applicable to your fantasy settings because they're trying to thread the needle of that category leagues and uh, points leagues um, com- combination. So make sure, again, check out all the videos that we're dropping. We're dropping, you know, maybe basically one per day, two per day this week. Subscribe to the channel. Give this video a big thumbs up. Check out NBA, uh, ballboysnba.com. And I'll see you next time. Bye.